at the closing bell from the New York Stock Exchange, signaling the end of the trading day. The Dow finished in positive territory following Tuesday's sell-off, ending more or less flat up around 60 points. The S&P and Nasdaq also had a better day than it did yesterday, both finishing relatively flat after big losses on Tuesday. Wall Street Journal reporter Caitlin McCabe joins us now with more on this. And Caitlin, good to see you. Thanks for uh, being with us. Thanks for having me. What were the big forces driving the market today? So investors that I were talking to today were saying that this was truly a sort of characteristic relief rally in the markets. And it really comes on the backdrop of a few pretty nasty days in the market. So yesterday we saw the S&P 500 sink 2.8%. We saw that same 2.8% drop last Friday. And the NASDAQ composite closed yesterday at its lowest level since December 2020, which really wiped out its entire gains for 2021. And so investors I were talking to, um, both on the individual retail level and money managers, were saying that this was probably just a return of people sort of buying the dip and averaging down their costs of some of their positions. But most people I were talking to were not thinking that this was some sort of start of a sustained rally upward. I think there are a lot of things weighing on investors' minds right now, ranging from inflation to this Fed hiking cycle that we've just begun to the war in Ukraine and and a possible recession in the coming months or years. Mm. Uh, and Caitlin, as you know, Facebook's parent company Meta is reporting their earnings today. Tomorrow, Twitter will post theirs. A lot going on, obviously, with that company. So what do you expect to see from these earnings? And I'm curious how you think it's going to impact the Nasdaq, which has taken some hits this year. Sure. So Meta is reporting earnings pretty much any second now, and analysts are expecting to see it post its slowest revenue growth on record as it faces issues with growing competition. Um, and they also expect to see a decline or they a decline in net income. And with Twitter, it's sort of a similar story. Analysts are expecting a decline in net income there as well. And this really is a big deal for markets, especially in the case of Meta, because these big technology companies weigh really heavily on the direction of major U.S. indexes. So sort of the largest six big technology companies out there, which is, of course, Meta, um, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Alphabet, and Microsoft, they make up 23% of the market capitalization of the S&P 500. So if you have several of those seeing dramatic drops in their stock prices, that can really weigh really heavily on the indexes. I mean, Alphabet reported earnings yesterday and it disappointed some investors. And we saw last I checked, I think their stock was down about 3% today. So certainly investors are watching these companies and their earnings results very closely. And on that note, as a whole, stock indexes are down substantially this year. So when might we be able to start seeing some of them rebounding? I think that's a great question. I mean, I think the one thing that this market has shown us this year is that it is extremely surprising. I mean, think about two or three weeks ago, we were seeing stocks rallying even amid all of these sort of things hanging over investors' heads. And so I think that it's really too soon to say. But will I, what I will say is that investors I've been talking to recently are extremely worried about this rate hiking cycle that we're currently in with the Federal Reserve and the possibility that if the Fed hikes you know, too quickly and too fast, um, that it could tip the U.S. economy into a recession. And we know, of course, that stocks don't tend to perform very well in recessionary environments. So I think for now, investors are um, you know, being a bit skeptical um, in both of their positioning and their outlook for the markets, just because I think that there is a lot of uncertainty right now. Caitlin McKay from The Wall Street Journal, thanks for joining us. We appreciate your insight. Thanks for having me.